Hey everybody, this is Jerry. Welcome back to the Auto Layout video tutorial series. In this tutorial, you'll learn about the visual format language, an option that makes creating multiple constraints much more compact. Even though the new NS Layout Anchor syntax makes Auto Layout code more readable, you still have to write many lines of code to create all the constraints necessary for your layout. The visual format language is a way to create many constraints, possibly involving many views, at the same time. It does that by using a syntax sort of like ASCII art. If you look at the specification for the visual format language, it may be hard to tell what it's expecting, but let's take a look at an example. This visual format string starts with an H colon. This specifies that we're working in a horizontal direction. You can only create constraints in one direction at a time. If you leave this part off, horizontal is the default. Then we have the pipe character, and that always represents the super view. This is optional as well. You can have a visual format language string that just describes the relationships between subviews. Next, we see a dash, and that represents the standard spacing. If you have no dash, that represents a spacing of zero. If you have a dash, and then a number, and then another dash, that represents a spacing equal to the number. Then we see a name in brackets, and that represents a view. We'll talk about the other numbers in a second, but this string represents three views, find, find next, and find field, all with standard spacing between them, and from them to the super view. The numbers in parentheses after a view represent the width of the view. So find next has a width constraint of 100 with a priority of 500. And find field has a width greater than or equal to 20. If this were a vertical string, those numbers would represent height and not the width. Let's take a look at the rest of the parameters when creating constraints with a visual format. After the visual format string, the next parameter is NS layout format options. The NS Layout Format Options struct is an option set type. That means you can pass in an individual value or use the set syntax for an empty set or multiple values. If you're used to using bitwise or, you'll have to convert to this set syntax. This parameter lets you specify an alignment perpendicular to the format direction. For example, if you have a visual format string in the vertical direction, you can specify to align the leading edge of the views. You can also specify a direction, but it's pretty rare to use any of these. The metrics and views parameters each take a dictionary that translates between words in the visual format string and values for metrics or views for the views parameter. In the case of metrics, this lets you use descriptive words like top gap instead of magic numbers in your string. The metrics parameter can be nil if you don't have any values to use in the string, but the views dictionary is how the method knows what you're calling each view. Even if you're using strings that match the view's variable names, the visual format parser still needs to know what that name is. The return value of constraints with visual format is an array of NS layout constraints, so this is a good place to use activate constraints since it takes an array. So let's return once again to our favorite app tracking the results of all our internet quizzes that we like to take. And we're going to going to convert this to using the visual format language. We can leave the code that creates all the controls in here. And let's just take out the constraints that we created using anchors. We're just going to leave a couple of them. We're still going to use our container, so we're going to leave a couple of the constraints relative to the container. The easiest way to create those is still using anchors. So we're going to sort of mix both methods, using anchors and using visual format language. One of the interesting things about anchors is if you're only using them in one direction to create constraints relative to your views, then you'll only need to constrain them in that direction. We don't need to create the constraints to the leading and trailing anchor of the margins because we're not using it to constrain any of our views in the x direction, only in the y direction. Let's talk for a minute about the strategy for creating visual format strings. If we look back at the interface we're going to create, 
and you draw a straight horizontal or vertical line through the interface, you want one visual format string for each line that you create. So we'll have one visual format string for the first name label and text field, another one for the last name label and text field, etc. And then vertically we'll have one, if we were creating constraints with the visual format language, we would have one for the labels and then we'll also have one for the text fields. We could draw a line through the text fields all the way down to the button, but we're not creating any constraints between the text field and the button, so we'll have a separate one just for the buttons. Any visual format language string that we create is going to need a views dictionary. So the first thing that we're going to do is create that views dictionary. And here I'm just going to use the same string as the variable name that I have, but you can use whatever string that you want. It just has to be unique. We're going to start using the visual format language to create constraints in the horizontal direction through each of the sets of labels and text fields. Because constraints with the visual format returns back an array of constraints, instead of using dot active equals, equals true like we have previously, we're going to use NS layout constraint activate constraints, which takes an array. We're creating constraints in the horizontal direction, so we I always like to use the explicit h colon, even though that's the default, just to make it more readable. We then have our super view. We're going to create a standard distance constraint between that and the first name label, and then the standard distance between that and the first name text field, and then a standard distance between that and the super view again. Now that creates constraints in the horizontal direction. And options allows us to create constraints in the perpendicular direction. So in the vertical direction, we want to align the baselines of our label and our text field. So I just pass align all first baseline. We're not using metrics for this, so that will be nil. And we'll pass in our views dictionary. And that will create all the constraints between those controls that we've defined and activate those constraints. Let's do the same thing for each set of label and text field. Now in the, in the last demo, we created alignment constraints between each of the labels, aligning the leading edge and the trailing edge. In this case, we don't need to do that. And this sort of illustrates the concept that there are different sets of constraints that will do what you want. And really the right one to use is the one that works best for you. In this case, with the visual format language, for us to align the leading and trailing edge of each of the labels would be more work than for us to just create standard distance constraints between the labels and the text fields, and then they'll also line up. Okay, we do need to create a um, constraint between each of our text fields, and that'll be in the vertical direction. Let's do that now. This is in the vertical direction. This is not relative to the super view. We already have constraints between the container that we've created and the first name text field on the top, and the real age text field on the bottom. So we don't really need constraints relative to the super view. We just need constraints relative to each text field. That will be a standard distance from the next one, and so on. In this case, we want two layout format options. And because NS layout format options is an option set type, we can use multiple options using the set syntax. So we want to align all leading and align all trailing. Again, metrics is nil. 
and we use our views dictionary. That's all the constraints for our labels and text fields. Let's add the constraints for the buttons at the bottom. In the horizontal direction, first, from the super view, a standard distance to the left button, and a standard distance to the right button. Now we want to specify width constraint, and we want the left button and the right button to be equal. Width constraints go in parentheses, and you can type in a number here, and that will specify a hard-coded width for this view. But in this case, we don't want a hard-coded width. We want it to be equal to the left constraint. So we put in equals left button. And that will create an equal width constraint between those. And we want another standard distance to the super view. We want the buttons to be aligned on the bottom. Matrix is nil and views is views. Now let's create the vertical constraint. Because the bottom of the buttons is aligned, we only need to constrain one button to the super view. We want that button to be 20 points from the bottom of the view. The standard distance is not 20 points. In this case, it's zero because the top level view has a zero size margin on the bottom edge. So we put 20 in parentheses here. In this case, we don't have any options to pass, so we use the option set type empty set, and that passes no options. Let's pass nil for the metrics again, and I'll look at that in just a minute. Before we run this, let's talk about using metrics in this final case. We have a value in our string of 20, and rather than hard coding that value into the string, we can create a metrics dictionary and use that metrics dictionary in the options for the method instead. So instead of passing nil, we'll pass that metrics dictionary. And instead of using 20 here, we'll use this bottom gap. Let's build and run this and see how it works. Okay, it's nicely centered vertically and our spacing all looks right. The buttons look right down at the bottom. Looks like we got it all laid out exactly like we want it. Well, that's it for this video tutorial. As always, we'd like to leave you with a challenge. For this challenge, you'll take this app that we built in Interface Builder previously and convert it to using the visual format language. All the details are in the challenge document. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.